when it comes to climate change, scientist Jim Barry says the atmosphere plays an important role, but it's not as important as the ocean. The oceans are the key pivotal part of climate change. Although we put this CO2 up into the atmosphere, most of it is in the ocean already. Barry says the ocean has been doing us a big favor. It's been sucking up carbon dioxide that humans add to the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels. All that CO2 is having a dramatic effect. It's making the ocean more acidic. We're worried about how far we can change ocean pH and how that's going to affect the physiological function of a variety of animals from the base of the food chain all the way up to things like tunas and fishes that we depend upon. Barry opens the door to a walk-in freezer at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, or Imbari, in Moss Landing. He reaches into a water-filled tank and pulls out a creature that looks like a small clam, called a brachiopod. There's a couple juveniles right there. These animals live at about 450 to 500 feet deep. At that depth, it's about 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Barry will be watching how these deep sea animals grow over the next few months under very controlled conditions. A third of them will live in normal seawater. I'll immerse another third of them in tanks that have regular oxygen levels but high CO2 levels. And a third group is going to receive even higher CO2 levels. The experiment simulates what ocean chemistry will look like over the next hundred years if CO2 emissions continue to grow. When CO2 dissolves in water, it creates something called carbonic acid. It's the substance that makes a can of Coke bubbly, but it also makes ocean water more acidic. That may actually benefit some animals, but it could be disastrous for others, like animals with shells. More CO2 means the ocean will have less of something called carbonate. Shells of most marine animals, clams, lobsters, corals, those are calcium carbonate. And when there's less carbonate ions around, it makes it more difficult to create carbonate shells. That could hurt the already stressed coral reef systems of the world. Reefs are home to a million marine species, and a recent study found that 30 percent of them are in danger of extinction. Other important animals could also be threatened, like tiny marine snails called pteropods, a favorite food of young salmon. What I am concerned with, and many ocean scientists are, is how will these changes translate into changes in food webs? To study this, Embari scientists are engineering an experimental chamber that will study acidification on the ocean floor. That's what a group of them are working on just off the Monterey coast on the 100-foot Point Lobos research vessel. For the equipment's first test, the team is sending it to the ocean floor on the Vantana, a remotely operated unmanned vehicle. They launch it off the side of the ship and follow the mission from a control room on deck. Okay, we're going to launch. Okay, I'm ready up here. My drone's coming up. As it drifts downward, the vehicle is plunged into darkness. Okay, Mine on zero deej. Thrust 120. Okay, I'm going to thrust it down. 240. Okay, what am I now? Half an hour later, it touches down at 1,300 feet, and the test run begins. Okie dokie. Nice job, Greg. Man, way to go, Greg. It's easier to get a look at the device back at Ambari headquarters. It's a large plexiglass container with wires and tanks attached to the sides. Right now, the chamber is suspended in a 30-foot deep indoor pool by an overhead crane. Peter Brewer is the senior scientist in charge of the project. He's been tracking ocean chemistry for more than three decades. It's a large rectangular frame. Uh, with a propeller at one end, which turns slowly and moves the water. And uh, into that water we'll put tiny amounts of carbon dioxide. Chambers like this one will be used on coral reefs and the sea floor. Scientists will control the water chemistry inside to see how marine organisms react. Brewer says biologists are racing against the clock. There are layers of complexity as, we, as we're changing our world, which are only dimly understood at the moment. We are disposing of carbon dioxide in the ocean via the atmosphere at about a million tons an hour. The, the, make no mistake, these are big changes. Brewer says the surface waters of the oceans have become 30 percent more acidic in the last 200 years. That rate of change is accelerating rapidly. Scientists expect waters to be twice as acidic by the end of the century. A study released in June found that more acidic water is already appearing off the Pacific coast sooner than expected. For Quest, I'm Lauren Summer, KQED Radio News.
Keep Quest free. Discover more and donate at kqed.org slash quest.